I want to uh, set us up for this film we're going to watch. It's sustain this is the Brantland definition of sustainability, sustainable development. It's development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the needs of future generations to meet their own needs. That's a bit convoluted. That's kind of vague. What I mean, I get it conceptually, but what are the needs of the present? Um, what are the needs of the future going to be? Right. And what's a need? Is it water? Is it food? Is it reproduction? Is it an iPhone? Is it a web camera? Right. What's a need versus a want? Um, and so it's really vague. And sustainable interaction with ecosystems is only possible if demands are kept within bounds. And so there's a lot of debate over this. How much can Earth, the environment, take uh, while still sort of supporting human life as we know it or, or knew it? And so this is a new section of the course that we're going to be starting, um, which is what is the relationship between population and resources? Um, how have people discussed this and what have they argued? A lot of people argue we have a population problem. We have too many people and not enough resources. And that's what's causing environmental degradation and also poverty and hunger, right? There's just not enough stuff and population grows too quickly. Uh, this argument goes back to a demographer named Thomas Malthus uh, that wrote an essay about this over 200 years ago, and it's still influential today. So I'll come back to Malthus in a sec. This is called the IPAT equation, and it's an instructive way to conceptualize which aspects are having the most impact on the environment. So the I, that's human impact on the environment, overall impact. It's a result of several factors, not just population. P for population, that's part of it. If people, if numbers weren't part of it, we wouldn't be here talking, right? Because we literally wouldn't be here. So people are part of it. But that's not the only thing that matters. And it may not be the most significant thing. There's also affluence, which is a fancy word for wealth or consumption. Certain people in the world consume far more than their fair share, and also a combination of technology. And technology is an interesting one. It can mitigate human impact on the environment, lessen it, like switching to solar and not emitting as much CO2 via fossil fuel burning. Uh, technology can also exacerbate human impact on the environment, I mean, make it worse. For example, fracking, it's a new, newer technique where you shoot high pressured water um, with sediments in it down into the ground in the underlying bedrock and it breaks apart natural gas that's trapped in the earth sediments you pipe that up to the surface you've got natural gas via fracking previously before fracking all this natural gas was completely inaccessible we didn't have the technology to access it so with fracking in um, this new technology we can now act continue to access fossil fuels right so way more than we knew that we would ever have access to. Like we're literally not going to run out of fossil fuels because the technology keeps getting better and better. Um, so this can actually make things worse, right? By forestalling a switch to greener energy or something else. It incentivizes us to continue to do the things that are creating problems. So we're going to focus on the P. And don't worry about any of these questions because we're going to talk about them all over the next couple of weeks. But we're starting with population. So just real quickly, Malthus, this demographer that wrote this essay in 1798, um, kind of a creepy guy. And you're going to see this in the film. Um, his, his ideas still influence thinking today and not without consequences. So what he said, population increases exponentially, uh, geometrically, while resources, specifically food, only increases arithmetically, meaning linearly. Eventually, the number of people is going to exceed available resources, food, and these Malthusian checks like famine and disease are going to set in and bring the population back down. So just again, he population grows, if unchecked, at a geometric or exponential rate, right? One person has a couple of, right, two people have four kids, um, they each have four kids, etc. cetera. Uh, he assumed fertility was around six, but four would actually make it to reproductive age, which is accurate for the time. Uh, food only increases linearly, right? You plant one field, you plant a second field, you plant a third field. This is pre-industrial revolution, so not too far off for the time. 
eventually the population growth is going to outstrip food supply and you get Malthusian catastrophe, war, famine, disease, as people die from malnutrition, fight over available resources, bring the population back down below carrying capacity. So you're going to be watching this film in between now and when we return called The Legacy of Malthus. One of the lasting legacies is Malthus made poverty and starvation seem to be natural, right? There's nothing we can do about it. Um, and if that's how you see the problem, that's going to influence what you see as the solution. And so the fo they also focus on population, this idea that people are the problem. 200 years ago, he wrote this, still shapes how we talk about it today. And if you think people are the problem too many, your solution that might stem from that might deal with population control. Um, things like sterilization. And not for everyone, right? For the poor. And so that's some of what you're going to see in the film is Malthus's ideas and the, the consequences of this type of thinking. Um, it's good. You're going to like it. And I think it'll surprise you a little bit what you see in it. Okay. There's film questions up for you. You don't need these. They're with the film for questions. Thanks, you guys.